Tesla is the world's most valuable automaker. Seriously, they are. This is determined by their market capitalization or basically how many shares are owned on the stock market multiplied by the price of those shares. So when Tesla's share price hit $1,134 in late June, their value in terms of market cap made them number one worldwide. Since then, the stock has split five to one, meaning that people that owned one share at the time of the split now own five, but at a lower price. So essentially the same value. So if they're the world's most valuable automaker, why aren't they more mainstream? Will they ever be mainstream or normal? Let's dig into the data and find out. Before we get into the video though, I wanna talk about today's sponsor, the FTD Academy. Data is the blood that courses through the economy's veins. It drives everything we do. And knowing how to work with data is a key to success in virtually all lines of work these days. The good news is that it's not as hard as it may seem. The key is to be able to communicate with that data, not just crunch the numbers, but present that information in a way that moves people to act. This is why I created the FTD Academy or the Free the Data Academy. It's to help you make a greater impact in your career by learning how to use data. And you can get started all for free with my course that shows you how to turn a boring spreadsheet into an interactive dashboard. The possibilities really are endless here and all you have to do is take that first step. So if you wanna learn more and sign up for free for my intro course, go to ftdacademy.com Ben. Now let's get back to the video. 10 years ago, making a car company seemed stupid and making an electric car company was stupidity squared, according to Elon. There was a time when electric cars seemed very stupid. Um, and, and it wasn't that long ago. Um, and then making an electric car company was like stupidity squared. So it took someone willing to risk everything in order to make this happen. Enter Elon Musk. Fresh off selling his stake in PayPal, Elon teamed up with a few guys in the Bay Area and invested in a small startup called Tesla Motors. They really set out to make EVs mainstream, and so they began to execute what they called their master plan. It started with the Tesla Roadster, a sexy sport car aimed to make a splash in the media and turn heads, not exactly to make a profit. Then came the Model S, a more affordable yet still pricey luxury sedan that would appeal to more people than the Roadster did. Next, you have the Model 3, the first mass market option with a lower price tag, but still kind of on the high end for a lot of people out there. They also produced the Fabergé egg of cars in between called the Model X, but we'll ignore that for now since that seemed more of a science project than an actual strategic move. And then they finally made the Tesla Model Y, and this is their latest addition, latest entrance into kind of this mass market space, which takes aim at the most popular segment in the United States, the crossover SUV. So with all that, Tesla is looking to deliver 500,000 cars in 2020, even given the pandemic, which shut them down for a little while, which is fantastic. But in that same time frame, others like Toyota are likely to deliver over 10 million cars. And throughout the world, people are gonna buy right around 60 million cars this year. What this means is that while Tesla may be the most valuable automaker, they are far from the top in terms of cars on the road. So how will they get to be more mainstream or will they ever actually reach that goal? For that answer, let's look to the country with the most EVs per capita, Norway. In Norway, Teslas are everywhere. In fact, Norway has the most EVs per capita coming in at 30.2 electric vehicles per 1,000 people, with more and more being sold every single day. And in 2019, Tesla almost beat out VW as the most popular auto brand overall, not just electric cars. And they were definitely the winner when it came to individual models with the Tesla Model 3. This was a massive success for Tesla and their sales increased by nearly 220% from 2018 as it jumped from right around 8,000 to 18,000. This was all made possible by big investments in charging infrastructure by the Norwegian government. And of course, that government also offered massive incentives for electric vehicle purchases. Some of these incentives include no annual road tax, a maximum 50% of the total amount on ferry fares for electric vehicles, parking fee for EVs implemented locally, but with an upper limit of the maximum 50% of the full price, so discounted parking, access to bus lanes, company car tax reduction reduced to 40%, no purchase or import taxes, and an exemption from the 25% VAT tax on a purchase, the value added tax that you typically have to pay for an imported product. 
So yeah, they really made it so buying an EV was just your best option, which is why they've seen such a big uptick in EV sales in recent years. But even given all that, if the US took an aggressive stance on EV adoption and put in massive incentives, Tesla still just isn't making enough cars for them to go mainstream yet, or anytime soon for that matter. Of course, Tesla's trying to change that by building out several new factories that are gonna increase their overall production. Notably, the next factory to come online is likely the Berlin Gigafactory. In Brandenburg, Germany, near Berlin, Tesla's building their fourth Gigafactory, which will produce batteries, battery packs, powertrains, seats, and assemble the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y for the European market. Eventually, Giga Berlin will be able to produce upwards of 500,000 cars per year for this segment. In China, Tesla is expanding their Shanghai factory to include Model Y production, which when fully operational should also produce around 500,000 cars per year, bringing their annual total to well over 1 million vehicles. And last but not least is the Terra factory in Texas. The new site near Austin will be making the Tesla Semi, the Cybertruck, as well as the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y for the eastern half of the United States. This will be Tesla's fifth factory and aims to be the largest with over 5 million square feet of floor space and likely able to produce well over 500,000 cars per year once fully operational. All of this, plus some new lines planned around the California factory, could push Tesla close to at least 2 million vehicles per year, which is honestly sort of a conservative estimate. In fact, not too long ago, a German media outlet reported that the Gigafactory in Berlin could produce up to 2 million cars alone, which would mean that the factory in Texas might be able to produce upwards of 4 million cars out of just that one factory when it's fully built out, which of course will take some time. Now, if that all comes true, in about five years, Tesla could be making upwards of 7 million cars per year, which would be very significant in the overall world market, but still only about 10%. Now, that would be huge for one company, and especially a company that only makes electric vehicles, because that would signal that they are really at a tipping point to kind of blow this out and for EVs to become mainstream. So the future is bright for Tesla, but if they really want to accelerate this transition and go mainstream, they're gonna to have to partner with other automakers. Coincidentally, this is part of a new strategy that Elon recently announced, and I covered this in a video recently that you can watch over here. So let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. Is seven million too much, too little? Please also like, share, subscribe if you're new, it's free. And always don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys back here in the next one.